that all give you guys notification? Yep. Yep. I, I found where it doesn't have to say it out loud. But oh, good. Better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Jack G is here now. All right, Jack. Okay, you ready? Yep. Is anybody new here tonight? Let me check out the faces. No, they all see. Regular. Oh, let me see someone else. About Barbara, have we met Barbara? All of us new. Or new? All of us new. Oh, all of us are new, yes, yes. Not, not uh, I mean, all, all of us new. Yes, like that, yeah. Welcome, everyone. Paul, uh, another Wednesday night. We sure say a lot about nothing. It's a lot of. Uh, uh, Thank you. Oh, wow. Oh, I mean, make sure everybody's muted. Yeah. I never knew there were two minutes. Okay. And me too. Yeah, that, that's made. That's how some people's heads sound right there. Yeah. Different voices. My mother is still antagging me, antagonizing me. So listen, uh, yeah, non-duality, uh, really, you can't say anything. I'm not a real believer in uh, trying to describe the indescribable or to try to comprehend the incomprehensible. I feel like uh, it'd be better to turn our eye, our third eye, to what we're not or the activities that seem to imply something uh, that causes us not to realize, well, you can't realize, but not to know that, you can't know that either. Well, not to be that nothing. So uh, I find the best information I gathered was really about uh, the mental activity and the speed of it and you know, what I heard and what I saw and what I kept seeing, we put into a name called selfing because I don't even like the idea of self as, because it implies there's something already where there's never been one or will there be a self, but the head's implying there already is one. See, this is the trick. It's a really tricky maneuver. So we start already compromised seemingly and then of course there's a drive to get out of that or to get into something else but m most of that activity of getting out and in is being used to reinforce the basic assumption that you're a long-lasting independent separate thing and you don't just come to that by seeing a body the body really represents a lot of activity that's been claimed. So the body is seen as the doer, the seer, the hearer, the feeler, the taster, the haver, the loser. It becomes, uh, it's an image that represents a lot of subjective activity, let's say, but attributed to a noun. So non-duality is basically a negation of that that assumed foundation and the dualistic movements that reinforce it. Yeah. So the biggest movement of the head is to claim. So it's brought into contact by us, whatever that us means to you, let's say consciousness or awareness. We bring something else into contact with those things and those activities and that mental process claims the activities to imply its storyline yeah which is there's a you that's doing it or being done to by it and it's very simple it's easily recognizable even with the idea of selfing because a lot of people would get in touch with me after they heard this idea 
and they would say, Paul, I've, I've noticed I've been selfing all day. Or, you know, the selfing is driving me crazy. Well, there was this assumed subject pictured as an object that thought they were doing the selfing or they were being done to by the selfing. That's actually the product of the selfing. Yeah, the selfing isn't just just a, a bunch of uh, words strung together. It's an imagery or a sense of something that gets produced. And that sense of something get that gets produced is pictured and remembered as a body. Yeah, so if you can see that and see that it's not volitional, there's nothing before it that's like you that thinks they can go left and right. There's nothing that's a, there's no noun that's the volitional uh, agent of the selfing. It's mechanical, yeah? It just happens. <laughs> it's not like, so the, the one of the big things people fall into when they start seeing the selfing, they, there's still a sense that there is some volition involved, that there is a someone that they are that's doing it and they shouldn't be doing it or it's bad to be selfing <laughs> that's also the selfing you see so you keep catching the thief in policeman garb yeah and then you see there isn't a thief and a policeman they're the they're the two sides of a single coin yeah there's thief policeman policeman thief yeah so <laughs> <laughs> the po the policeman really seems to come into existence when there's a thief yeah and then when the thief when paul as a thief is noticed then a policeman shows up and starts uh walking the beat and going over every freaking thing you ever do you know <laughs> and it's just an incredible obsession with self guarding against obsession with self it's just unbelievable so uh self can't get out of self is a wonderful statement and it's a it's a description of an activity it's not oh that sounds pretty interesting i wonder when self tried to get out of self 1984 no it's describing an activity that may be going on right now you know self can't get out of self yeah of course, it's disguised as Judith or Linda or Paul. And then that makes sense to try to get out of self. Because from Judith, which is AKA self, the self it wants to get out of is foreign to it. This is what's so confusing, why we can't escape. <laughs> Some of us have spent years, years, yeah. Many people here have done a whole lot more on a spiritual level, but I, I feel I did my utmost uh, effort in drug addiction, yeah. And I don't see there's really much difference in spiritual seeking and drug addiction. <laughs> we're either trying to get into something that we're not out of or out of something that we're not in. Yeah, so it, they, they, they may pass on the road, <laughs> but they basically go to the same place. So, um, yeah. So the claiming, all right? And then it's the idea of the speed of it is just that what allows you to see the thief isn't the policeman, it's the seeing, yeah? The seeing provides the light to recognize stuff. That seeing, seemingly a new addition, gets claimed like everything else the mental state comes in contact with and now that seeing is a new seer that's seeing the thief and it has a lot of damn opinions about the thief and what the thief should be freaking doing and on and on and uh the whole idea was not just to recognize the thief but to recognize the policeman and to see it's just a flip of a coin yeah yeah, you can't have the, a one-sided coin in this realm of duality. There's going to be two aspects, and the two aspects could be grossly drawn as policeman thief. Yeah, when I feel there's something that happens 
when you see the second edition of self, when you see self can't get out of self instead of Paul can't get out of self. Yeah, there's something that occurs that doesn't occur when you only recognize one aspect of it. Yeah, when you recognize the thief, the policeman seems to get a lot stronger. Yeah, I couldn't believe uh, the demands of perfection after I got sober. <laughs> I mean, the, the yardsticks of judging me were all new and they had gotten, they had lengthened and they were all gold and I was bound to fail from the get-go. So to recognize there's an activity going on that's presupposing the non-existent thing to be existent, that activity that does that is supposed after the claiming, but presuppose so that when you recognize the claiming, you'll be thinking you're claiming or you shouldn't be claiming. Yes, this is how it's it comes after and yet it's presupposed to be before. So there's a little trick in time and it only works is because our program sees time as linear. Yeah, we see time as past, present, future with no deviation. So the trick works based on that assumption. And so, so therefore, there's a claiming of being the doer from the doing. The claiming of the doing is allowed to, it's used to imply the doer, and then the doer is presupposed before everything else. And now everything that happens, you're the doer of. To such a stubborn extent, even when you've been taken over by addiction, like full-flamed addiction and you're apt to do almost anything yeah there'll still be a claiming of being the doer even after years of sobriety there still won't be any freedom from that shame and guilt of being the doer of those past behaviors that's how stubborn this programming is yeah so the whole point is if you don't go to the center of the programming, which is this idea of self, to try to change the programming as the programming, which would be the act of being identified self, obviously doesn't work. Yeah, you can push and shove and it may change a little, but basically everything stays the same. So the solution can't come from the problem, obviously. So, so the speed of it and time the claiming of it, and there's nothing out of bounds. You're not going to go to a 2,000-year-old tempo temple and be free from that activity because it's not something you're doing. Yeah, It's just a mechanical act. The mental state gets introduced to something through consciousness or awareness, claims that something to imply that this object is the one that's aware and conscious. Yes, so there you go. So right underneath our nose, what we are actually being right now goes completely disguised in plain sight. <laughs> it's unbelievable because it's a tricky move, the act of being identified as something. Yeah, usually someone who's in that act and there's no someone, but when the mind is in that act, it, th there's a quality that you don't know it. <laughs> That's the whole point. So the whole point of this information is for you to maybe see it, not from the system, which isn't really seeing it. Yeah, you get a little tidbit here or there, but seeing it from what you are, which is always available at all times with no requirement necessary. It's the only problem is the super quick interpretation of the seeing and turned into you looking. Yes. So. If you can see it, notice it, which I believe you can because you're before everything. Nothing, in other words, like let's say selfing is a gunslinger and it beats every other process. It's got the quickest gun, uh, gun in the West. But what's not of time, which we are, or always has the gun out. It can't lose. Yeah, because it's always, it beats the freaking selfing at all times because it's before the selfing. It's what illuminates the selfing. It gives life to the selfing in a way. So you can see what you're not. You can, yeah. You can be aware of what you're not. You can get a sense of what you're not as what you're not instead of constantly, habitually having a sense of what you're not as what you are. You can see it, yeah. 
And I feel one of the vehicles to assist in that is satsang and the repetition of the same message over and over again so that something lands, yeah? Not at your airport where everything's getting detoured from, you know, SFO Mike. We're trying to land at the big one. Yes, yeah. <laughs> That's when so much information comes through that you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. It may explain your whole life since you were six years old in a nanosecond. It may explain what no one could get through to you before. No, none of the reading, none of the anything, none of the meditating and flagellating and forcing myself to understand something. Just having the ears to hear that is more than enough. It lands, yeah? You know, and you get why does that make total sense now? Because you're not seeing the Buddha as Paul, yeah? You're seeing the Buddha as Buddha. And you, you get the message. He wasn't talking to Paul about, hey, you better not use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. He was talking to the Buddha, yeah? You can hear it a thousand times and get the message after it's been claimed and all you need to do is hear it once without the message claimed and it overrides the 900, 990 whatever distorted re receptions. It just clears everything up, yeah? It doesn't take a thousand times of landing. It may only take one. It may take five, it may take eight, yeah? But then there's a sufficient enough shift let's say 50.0.1% of interest and attention, and now that which was shaky, and from where you were looking at it from, you'd have to fucking work hard to maintain that condition and this and that, now becomes a solid, stable foundation, yes? And then you see all the insanity from that solid, stable foundation, yeah? And then there's no going to war. It's a disarming. Yeah. You lost interest in selfing, really. And I believe one of the keys for that to be initiated is to see that selfing isn't about us and it isn't done by us and we're not the topic of it, yeah? There's going to be a definite loss of interest as soon as you figure it out it's not you, yeah? Because even in this world, all, most of the time, the only thing you're really caring about is you. Yes. So basically, if you saw you weren't that, a lot of that care would go somewhere else. Yeah. And it's not going to go to others for 50 years, maybe. I don't see many uh, Mother Teresa's here. It's probably going to go into that incredible foundation of... of uh, presence and availability yeah yeah if you ever had a journal you probably won't have one after that <laughs> what never leaves if you could write about that that would be worthy of a journal but all the comings and goings based on the fact that what never leaves i mean it gets overridden the importance of what comes and goes yeah <laughs> I barely can remember 15 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> if I sat down, I would have, 10 a.m. would have looked like an era or an epoch ago. <laughs> it was like a, a, a yuga, a whole age, I don't know. <laughs> I like it this way, yeah? I do. It's traveling lighter. You're completely engaged in what you're engaged in. Yeah, it's awesome. it's awesome. Yeah. I spent a lot of the day screwing tiny little screws into something. <laughs> I, there was so much peace available. It's great. <laughs> I'll probably do it after the talk for a while. <laughs> When you 
stop using so much time and effort to do shit, something's going to do something to you. <laughs> so when you stop trying to do so much stuff, something starts doing something with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, there's a lot of other things. The idea of talking to the dreamt, or let's say talking about, I love the the very clear message Ramana gives about a, a question many people have, which is that, is it predestination or free will or end free will? And the way he puts it is so beautiful. It says, as long as there's a sense of individuality, there'll be a sense of free will. Yes? End of story. Yeah? So as the whole point is not to question the free will, is to question this, the, the sense of individuality. That's what's giving so much meaning to the question of free will or not, yeah? If you see that that individuality is, is just a manufactured sense, you lose all interest in, is it predetermination or free will or shit like that, yes? You're just here. And that's basically the only, that's the only question you ever wanted answered is here, here and now, yeah? You thought it was gonna be later, in some mythical, magical, transcendent place, but really, what you're looking for is right here and now. Yeah. All right. You want to open up, Mike? Yeah. Uh, but first, you've been slapping us around every time you bang the table. <laughs> oh, was that? The old days. I used to do that a lot. <laughs> So it's both making a loud sound and it's, and it's rocking the picture. <laughs> oh, great. Yes, well. <laughs> I'm not uh, dead. I'm alive. I'm alive. The energy is coursing through me. Yes. Um, we have, and kicking. We have, Jack, we have Jack G and then we have Mary G. Jack G or Mary G. Yeah. All right. All right, Jack G. In the dark with his glasses. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, it's late here. Uh, hi, Paul. Don't worry about your physical disabilities, Jack. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, about, don't hide in the dark. Yeah. Let me see. Well, I'm Come half on. naked. I'm half naked too, though. Oh no! Please, yeah, save us from the rude awakenings. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, uh, fully clothed. Um, really? anyway, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, you are? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I had a, uh, I actually thought of this question today, like earlier today. And, uh, you know, somehow I, uh, I think it probably has a lot to do with what you're talking about. So the question I'm going to ask you is, and it, I'm going to use just uh, Buddhist uh, terms, and it, there's not a lot of terms. It's just this, what I've noticed. What I've noticed lately, and again, this may have to do directly with what you were just talking about, um, but it, in a way, I don't think so. But what, I, what I've noticed is that the, samska <laughs> the samskaras of the three poisons. Samskaras are hanging out and I'm watching them as a, as not as the policeman, but as um, just as a unbiased observer. And it, it's making me kind of laugh, you know, when I see it. So- Yeah, great. Yeah. So, so there's it's that. Language, but there's just not, there's no observer, there's observing, yeah. Right. So. Well, yeah. that's what I meant. That's what I meant by um, unbiased. Yes. Observing, yes. unbiased. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. Observe um, but have a prejudices. Yes. Okay. So, uh, and I had another question too, but it's it's going to be uh, kind of well, it may not be off topic of what you were just talking about. And uh, it's a non—it's a non-dual uh, question, 
and it and it's um, it is uh, um, how is not two not one. How is not two not one? Because not two is a negation. It goes right to zero. It doesn't stop at one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we think it's two one zero, but it's two zero. <laughs> okay, I gotcha. Awesome. Yeah. Really, yeah. The, there is a zero, but in this little event of time and space, it's two to zero. Two to one is just more two. Do you know what I mean? Yes. yes. Because the dualistic mind, it would see that the opposite of two would be one. Yeah? Yes? Yes. And this idea of uh, they're both infected with that uh, delusionary quality. Yes? So it's seeing uh, the negation of non-duality isn't the the bearing of oneness it's nothing yeah that's the beauty yeah yeah Thank see you. what what makes you want one is two yeah see two-ness thinks it would be it would be such a better greater two-ness if it could enter it, it could enter oneness <laughs> it's just sort of like the idea of wanting to experience your own absence or constantly waiting to get it yeah having something that's not so included in your arrival date yeah that's why it seems like it's an arrival date yeah 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 so yeah not, not two not two there's a great thing if you write buddhism there's a great uh little thesis called faith mind it's only a couple of pages translated i like by a guy i think it's richard clark uh there's a lot of translations of it but you can just look it up faith mind and basically at the end he goes over you know you don't have to look for the truth just stop cherishing your own opinions and all this yes it's just a negation and then he just says just yell out not two yeah it doesn't say yell out one he just yells out not two yeah 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 Perfect. yeah yelling out one would always come from the two <laughs> But the negation of the two doesn't lead to one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, Jack. It's good to see you. Thank you, Paul, very much. Yeah. It's good to see you. Thanks, yeah, Jack. Always. I heard you ran into Mike in New England. I, you know what? If I was going to do a, a, talk, a book on samskaras, I'd like it to be... Uh, pronounced by a New Englander, samskaras, the three samskaras, Jesus Christ, what the fuck is he talking about, samskara, <laughs> uh, I, I feel the same way about the New York accent, so, all right, Paulie, <laughs> you gotta give me samskara, that's pretty, heavy. that's pretty, if you said it to a Hindu guy, they wouldn't know what you're talking about, <laughs> The three sons of boys. What the hell are those? Three brothers uh, from three brothers from Usta. <laughs> the three sons of brothers. One's worse than the other. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Muscara. Yeah. Sam Scarra. I had this guy for years. He finally met me and he says, uh, I'm always confused when you say 
the seeker is the sword. He thought I was saying sword, not sought. And he was confused for years. And I finally said, no, sought. S-O-U-C-G-H-T. He thought it was sword. <laughs> the seeker is the sword? What the hell is he talking about? There's some nice girls here, so I'll keep coming back. But the seeker is the sword? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had trouble with flaw too, F L A W. I have to, they thought it was flaw, F L O O R. Gotta be very, you know, you gotta really explain yourself sometimes. Yeah. You know, flaw. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jack, thank you. You made my night, really. Um, you ready for Mary? Am I ready for Mary? Hmm. Bring her on. Bring Mary on. Hello, Paul. Hey, thanks for. Uh, what's a scara? Hmm? What's a scara? Oh, samskara. Those are like deep mental grooves. And I think it more comes from Indian uh, philosophy. Samskara is a deep mental grooves. I would see alcoholism hmm. like a deep mental or yeah. addiction, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. In other words, they, they have last ability in this dreaming and they can, they have the ability to produce effects seemingly, yeah. They've got a momentum that's strong, yeah. 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 A lot of it like takes off and then putters out, but some scars uh, have some oomph in them, supposedly, you know. Mm -hmm. In Buddhism, they believe uh, this whole idea of this place is real gets built on certain things, and one of them are some scars. Yeah. Mm. Yes. But that's a uh, that's for a, a philosophical seminar. Yeah. Well, you know, just I, I'm just thinking of the course where it talks about um, and just says that it's not supposed to work here. Like this world isn't supposed to work. It was, it was, we created it, not we, it was created to be made. a, yeah. or made to yeah. block us from the truth. And it's, it's not supposed to work and it never will. And that always gives me comfort, really. That's great news. Yeah. Yeah. So Hopefully Paul. Have to this yeah? page. That would have been good. What's that? They would, they, it would have been good if they had it on the author's page, that statement, right yeah, away. Yeah. Yeah. 200 yeah. in the text. Just give up hope. <laughs> just forget it. Yeah. So, Paul, I just I just wanted to share, like, when you talked earlier today, you, you mentioned a lot about repetition. And I I, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, you, you talk a lot about there's a there's hearing... Uh, but there's no hearer, there's seeing, there's no seer, there's touching, there's no toucher. And somehow I miss there's thinking, there's thought that there's no thinker. And, uh, and it's, you must have said that a few weeks ago. And it was just like, boom, that, I, you know, this is how tricky, like to me, or how, how blind, you know, I can still be or whatever, like, or seeing. Not, be. It's like you said, you are uh, the you that you're not is of this world and its job is the job that the course of miracles just described about this world yeah. it's part of that yeah so yes well I, you know, I just wanted to like it, it, to just if anybody you know myself it's like just sticking with listening to you repeating these things because it there's such uh like it's like you say the catch the, the catching mid is out there and and, yeah. and i just it's so beautiful when when it just comes because it's like you're ripe or something there's a ripeness and then that you can just land and and it was just it's so freeing paul that there can be thoughts without a thinker and then i read in your book that that when we um when we claim the thought it's really the body it has something to do with being in the body also it's like the thought is captured in the body. And of course, we're not a body. And so I saw that I, that landed too. And it was like, if I didn't have a body, it would be so much, if I knew about that, or, you know, if I were more aware, 
if I live from that place and I'm not there yet, but it's like the thought wouldn't have anywhere to stick. So somehow they're related. Well, yes, the, the, the thought anchors in a bigger thought and that thought is being the body. <laughs> right. All the right. other, I'm a barnacle on that hole. Yes, of course. That's why the body represents a lot. The body in and of itself to me is a form of expression and observation and reflection. Yeah. Uh, it's quite useful in a lot of ways in this, in the event we're in. Yet the mental state uses the body to reinforce an idea uh, that's not of the body. Yeah. The idea is not of the body, it's mm -hmm. of the mental activity, but it uses the body to represent and uh, to bring about a conviction that uh, you are a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that would go right along with what the Course in Miracles says. So the dreaming, as we see it, is has its own agenda and purpose, and that's to sort of blind us to what's seen, mm -hmm. yeah? That's why I feel everything is a failed system, because its value is to leave you completely naked, and then you find out, uh, through seeing what you're not, as what you're not, what you are, yeah? So there's no failure or success, there's value. There's great value in failing at times, and there can be a great drag in, val in failing. But as the Course says, your greatest successes were your greatest failures, and your greatest failures are your biggest successes, whatever, yes? Yeah? So, it's talking about such an extreme, uh, bizarro world. And, you know, it goes on and on quite a lot about that. Like the head's communicating, the brain is communicating uh, or interpreting this place uh, to the body. Yes. And uh, yeah, it's like a thing fest. Yeah. If there's a doing, there must be a doer. And that doer is going to it's got to be a thing somewhere. It's like a big God and that's a thing up there or whatever. Yeah. So it's just, uh, and the repetition is just that we, we put out the same fish every week. Yeah. You know, we may change the, the plate here and there and maybe change the lighting, but it's the same fish, but see, every time you eat it, it tastes differently. And one of those times, it may really, really taste in an incredible way where a whole lot will be explained in a matter of a nanoseconds. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I like repetition because I see repetition is used by the mental state to produce its effects. Why not use mm -hmm. the repetition to produce other effects? Yeah. And I, Paul, what I find now is like, they can still grip. I mean, like the the illusion or whatever, but it'll never have like it's the jaws aren't aren't as tight on. Like it's you know, once you see from what you're not for just like you say the samples, you'll never be. I don't. For me, I I just feel like I'll never be able to. I'll never be as as fooled again. Good. Well, good. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be surprised. It's, this is what happens. Mm -hmm. I've been at these things. I've been to a lot of Paul Hedeman meetings. Yeah, I've been here thousands of times and I've observed a lot of stuff. Yeah, I don't write it down, but I have observed a lot of stuff and uh, I have faith in what we're speaking of. Yes, mm -hmm. so yeah. It doesn't take much, really. Hmm. It's sort of like something spinning, and there's one hole that goes all the way to the center. So by repetition, mm -hmm. it's like you've got a better chance of winning, so to speak. Because the law of probability, if you you know, put something in the same hole a hundred times, one of them's going to get all the way through, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so this is what happens shit that flew over your head suddenly lands yeah, yeah, and yeah. it flows 
and then you see it at the next few months you see that you're traveling lighter you may not even remember when it's when that was initiated but some people do and then you start growing in faith so to speak and and that shows itself by uh becoming okay with uncertainty uh not trying to push the rock up the fucking hill. You know, things like that start informing you something has changed behind the scenes. <laughs> right. And you're not doing it. And you're not. Yeah. You know, you can see that Paul is, it's just a name on a door that has many, many different rooms. Those change. So, yeah. Well, I just wanted to share that because I'm just so grateful and it's just like it's this great adventure man like yeah um, it's pretty cool it's, it's amazing you know, yeah. Wednesday, Wednesday night you know we've it's almost like us uh an experiment you have to see some of us have been here every Wednesday for a year or so see what came about you know it's pretty amazing mm -hmm. Just well, spend thanks for being here, Paul. Thanks for, you know, the same, the same old, it's like meetings, right? It's the yeah. same. It's just, uh, like you said, that's exactly right. The grooves of the, of the old ideas are so deep that this repetition may be the only antidote. Well, it works. Yeah. So the point is, uh, most people who really fall into it aren't going to write a life story. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're going to live a life story. They're not going to write it, probably. They're just going to live uh, more chilled out, somewhat content and satisfied, and uh, an incessant feeling of, never, of always being here and of being available and of service when necessary. Yeah. 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 And then you have your little action figure like they used to people used to supposedly you know complain to Nizagadatta Maharaj you gotta stop smoking and shit and then Maharaj said hey throw the body a bone you know what I mean and it likes it likes the nicotine let it have fucking some nicotine right, right. not getting perfect here <laughs> so in a way the action figure finds little weird things that interest it and uh yeah, it's not burning down houses or shit. It doesn't need to have surveillance. It's just uh, just a regular jamoke hanging out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, my thanks, my thanks, my friend. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I wouldn't be here without you. If no one showed up, I, we would have stopped the Zoom. Mm -hmm. yeah, I yeah, hope I, you do it forever. Doing more little screws in. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to start selling these things. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's wonderful. I thank God for the for the pandemic. That's all I can say. <laughs> well, you know, thank, thank Michael and all the people yeah. that they set the Zoom up and David and people from England and stuff and uh I wasn't we didn't know what we were going to do, you know, and then people just mm -hmm. pushed me and then it was easy. Yeah. 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 So come up with these ideas of, of zooms it's a great it's a i look forward to it. it's a great group in our akim group anybody's interested we're it's it's going beautifully too it's really just a healing place wonderful miracles acim yeah just yeah of course the miracles group yeah on monday night so it's not that like a this too. renegade tupperware party. yeah not like a hell's angels akim yeah yeah so. yeah yeah well, to see you honey and i feel like uh some of the uh you know the policeman had like a sergeant now it's back to a private yeah it was a, yeah it was you up pretty good on the beat so yeah 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 now lightning nuts lightning up paul yeah fantastic mm -hmm. yeah. thanks my friend all right you well thank you yes Mary, anybody else want to raise their hand? You know, Mike Mike Z does a lot of service for Zen Bitch. But it's all he out does. of my home. <laughs> I don't care. I'm just I'm just telling them. You do a lot of service, and you're you're goofy like all of us, but you're very reliable. Yeah, 
I don't think anyone who's got it together is really drawn to Zen bitch slap anyway. So, yeah, I just wanted to thank you again and acknowledge it to the group. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you, as always. Uh, John R. has got his hand up. John. Hey, Paul. Hey, Mike. Thanks for your service. Um, oh, John R. Yes. What do I want to say? Okay. Um, so, um, so I'm just doing some grieving. Um, my, I'll try and see this without bawling, but my mother passed away. Um, you can ball, bro. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would if you weren't recording, but I don't want it to be like... Anyway, um, so she's passed away and I'm doing the grieving and I'm, you know, the, the tears are coming and the heart's opening it's a beautiful experience, yeah, even in that pain. Um, where am I going with this? Um, you know, clearly we've all been in whatever this COVID shit is and I haven't been able to get back to the UK for 18 months and it doesn't look like I'm going to make the funeral and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I'm one of um, a few family members, children. Um, and now it's come into the, you know, render unto seas a bit. Um, and I'm struggling um, because I think some stuff's been done inappropriately. And I'm fucking angry. And my, my MO is when, I, when, I, when John gets angry, he chops heads off. And um, I'm in fear at the moment that, at the end of this process, there won't be any family left. It will, I will have destroyed what, what there is because I don't agree with um, some things. And, and I guess the reason I'm bringing this up in front of you now is what I'm asking for is if I can get some help, I need some help to process this. I recognize, you know, I've ended up in these rooms. I've had a Satori experience with you, thought I got it all worked out and that I keep coming back and then I haven't got it worked out and I'm up against the coal face again and then it clears and then it's gone and then it's clears and I'm John, just John why don't you call yeah. me up just call me up yeah if okay. you want yeah 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 uh, you know you talk. thank you for the offer I've been um you know not wanting to I, I guess you're a busy man and I you know my worthiness not is low <laughs> I try. I try to put out that. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Call me up. Yeah. Yeah, John. Because this is. Uh, so. Yeah. This right. is. I'll get. It would be better talking with me or someone else, and then you yeah. can. Yeah. Because uh, you won't be filmed, and you won't have to worry about crying. That's what I'm. That's what I'm doing here. Okay. So call me up. You have my right, number. Thank you. Yeah. Do I? Yeah. I'll get it off mic later. Yeah. Get Mike. We'll give it to you. Yeah. Good. Good, John. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. For, thank you for feeling safe enough to bring this stuff up. You know, this is part of the uh, space of the Zoom. We hope to hold. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, John. Um, anybody else want to raise their hand? We're having less questions. It's finally working.
All right, well, send then, Mike, if you like. Well, let me say hello to Z and Janine. Hey, Z and Janine. Nice to see you. Yes. Anu, thank you for all the support. We got Clifford from Chiang Mai. Nice to see him. Yes. Mary G. Yeah. Uh, Sanda. Yes, we're all new. Here we are once again. We got uh, Ashley from Dallas. Nice to see you, Ashley. Yeah, we've got uh, Dana. Dana. I, it's Dana. D E N A. Yes. Yes. Nice to see you, honey, again. Yes. We got Art. He used to be a he used to be a citizen of Dallas. Ashley, right over there. Now he's uh, in he's in Santa Fe, I think. Yes. Yes. Nice to see you, Art. Art had me come down to Dallas. That was a trip. Speak at a cocaine anonymous thing. I saw you there. I was there. Oh, you were. Oh, great. I great. shook. I shook your hand. Oh, great. Never. And then I got in, I got in, introduced to Texas barbecue. And then Art had one of those ceramic high-end, uh, whatever they things are, grills with the wood. I, I took it home with me. I, I brought a couple of pieces of brisket back to San Francisco. That was pretty good. Very well treated there. It's nice. I, I'm happy I met you, Ashley, there. Yes. And uh, let's see who else here. We got Mike. We said hello. Jesus Christ! It's the, it's the three amigos in Hawaii. We're gonna need a bigger Zoom. We're gonna have have a bigger square. <laughs> we got Judith, the Mama San. We got Carrie. We got Linda. Jesus Christ! They're multiplying. Yes. <laughs> Who's going to be there next week? Will be Vlad. Vlad will be in Hawaii. Yes, that'll be good. John K's coming. John K. John K's coming. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's awesome. Man. That's a nice uh, side effect of the Zooms, eh? And Judith and Carrie, you're being ho -hus so hospitable and charitable. That's great. Yes. Linda will give me the real news when she gets away from you too. So tell me how it is. Yeah. All right. We got Robert in New Zealand. Hi, yeah. Paul. Hi, Robert. Thank you. You your presence means a lot to me, Robert. Oh, thank you. I'm yeah. glad to be here. Great. We have Gio, our little Brazilian Hoang Po. There he is. Yes. Don't do, don't move your hand too much, you know, just, there he is. Ah, uh, yeah, that, they're just like this, go like that, yeah. All right, John K., the next person in Hawaii. Jesus Christ. I think we should open a Zen Bitch Slap travel agency, get a couple percentages, yeah. Yeah, we'll book you to see Judith and Carrie slash Linda. Yeah, you'll have a lovely time, yes. All right, we'll pick you up at the airport. All right, we have, uh, who else? Kenneth, my man, my uh, my Buddhist scholar in Vancouver. Very nice. Nice to see you, Kenneth. Yes. Vlad, always a pleasure. I miss Thank Vlad. Thank you so much, Bo. I liked, I liked our time in London. That was fun. Hopefully, I'll go back there sooner or later. Yes. But you're in Portugal now, yeah? No, I'm back to Russia. Oh, you're in back. You're in Siberia again. Uh, yeah, wow. I will go back to Portugal again. What's oh. the best time to call you? Uh, call me in the day. Uh, you know, you can in get the day. What? So I can discuss. I can discuss if we can meet. I oh yeah, yeah. Meet you. 
Yeah, like I said, we'll be in Pescara on the 26th for a while, and we're going to be going to other places, but we'll be staying down there. Yeah, in Pescara, in Italy. It's right, uh, it's right east of uh, it, uh, Rome on the Adriatic. Okay. Each city, yeah. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, we'll try to make it work. Yes? Yeah, for sure. Yes, for sure. I'm I'm so grateful for your for your talks. So no. it's really ama amazing feeling. Great, great. And, well, and I, and I feel this grateful for the for the days, like it comes to me in like waves of yeah. gratitude. Yes. Well. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, bud. Yep. We got Barbara. There she is. Yes, Barbara. Yes, you gave me that. Yeah. Fantastic, Barbara. Nice to meet you. Where are you from, Barbara? From Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Oh, Alberta. All right. Yes. Stampede City. Oh, my friend lives back. It was, I don't know where she is, Monique, but I knew her from Toronto, but she's living in Alberta now. Yeah. yeah. City of the Cowboys. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I'm happy to meet you, Barbara. Yeah. Yeah, I, I listened to a lot of your talks. I, I'm truly enjoying it. And thank you for your dedication. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I got nothing else to do, really. <laughs> like all of us. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, Art from New Mexico. Yes, I said hello to everyone here. I'm not saying twice. John R., give me a ring, John. And uh, this isn't about getting out of living. Yeah, it's about completely being in living. Yeah. I had a, you know, sometimes there's like, not much anymore but for a long time i have like rich waves of sadness you know because of the of the uh no fault of its own coming and going and everything temporal yes and things appear to disappear it's in a way it brought about a rich sadness in life it was a lot of it was like thick lovely paint in there but it wasn't like a bummed out sadness i felt quite uh, full, full, yeah, when it was coming through. So, and you're present for your mother's spirit. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's actually a great, you know, I've had two, I helped, I had an opportunity to be at a birth, you know, help uh, this lady have a baby home birth. And I've been with people when they passed away. And it's the same energy, same portal coming and going. It's the exact same juice, I felt. Yeah, it was an amazing experience watching that baby's head pop. And then I saw people take their last breath, yeah? And the space inside that, it, wherever it was, was just fucking unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, there's Clifford. Yes, Clifford, take a deep breath there. Nice to see you. Yeah. Anu? Yes. Anu, you're in very good hands, yes? You're in good hands. I'm beginning to feel that way, Paul. Thank you so much for all your help. You're welcome. And thank you for your help. It's greatly appreciated. Yeah. Oh, Stefan on having never left. Stefan only spoke once, I think, here, but once was more than enough. It was a, it left, left a lasting impression. It really did. Yeah. I mean, that's the power before the words. It's very good. And we got uh, JP. It's been watching. Nice to watch JP uh, uh, molting a lot of mental skins. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. We have Johannes. Now, Johannes was another guy. Johannes, I've been watching his facial structure for this year and a half or something. And I'm happy to see that uh, 
the policeman of appearing as Johannes was sort of uh, taken off the horse. <laughs> He's now a security guard at a Walmart. Yeah, thank God. Nice thank to you see you. Oh, thank yeah. You. Kaiser. Kaiser, Kaiser. Kaiser's another character. Yeah. 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 Nice to see you, Kaiser. And Jim. Jim also. Jim. It's very symbolic. All those boxes are there. Yeah, they're all ready to be discarded. There's nothing in them. Yeah, there you go. Don't worry. You're not. De it's not depending on you moving them. The moving company is being sent. Yeah. You just... You'll just tell the truth about their disappearing. Yeah. All right. We got Jack G. Nice to see you, Jack. Thank you for uh, telling us you weren't fully clothed. That was a good warning. We got Jim. I don't know where Jim, he's somewhere. We got Graham and we got Alex and we got Susanna, my friend, Susanna W, I think. That's a pleasure. Maggie. Oh, Nina also. Alex. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think that's it. Hey, listen. Thanks, everyone. It's really yellow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys. See you uh, Saturday, hopefully, it's tomorrow, every on Thursday. And then Saturday will be uh, non-duality, 1.30, so Pacific time. I'll see you, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks man. Paul. Thanks, Paul. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Judith.